Hello guys and welcome back. I hope you're doing really well. Some more interesting news to cover again today. I'm going to be focusing on Zilliqa, Chainlink, Quant and HBAR. Lots of different news going on as we get closer and closer to that altcoin season. So one of the first things I wanted to look at in today's video is Zilliqa. I covered it recently after I did a bit of research into the project after it had a bit of a uh, massive amount of price action to the upside. It's continued that price action to the upside and we're up another 22% nearly on the daily. Um, and the seven days has been absolutely mental, a couple of hundred percent effectively. Now, I mentioned I will be staying, steering very clear of this project at the moment and I'm going to continue to abide by that. What goes up must come down. It's a fundamental law of the universe. Um, whether that be uh, in reality via gravity or within markets, you know, these swings will be very volatile. Something interesting to note as well is just the sheer amount of volume at the moment. And this is what completely puts me off. Um, obviously, it's bullish volume because it's increasing the price, but we can see the market cap here. Obviously, this is in pounds, but 1.8 billion pounds of market cap currently ranked 56. And it's had a trading volume. It was a higher than this the other day, actually, but around five and a half to six million pounds of trading volume. So three times its market cap is circulating continuously. Um, that tells me that there is a serious amount of money flowing in and out of this project at the moment. Obviously, there's more money flowing in because the price is increasing. Um, however, this will not sustain this indefinitely. I've seen a lot of calls, people saying this is going to go to a dollar. It may go to a dollar over the longer term. However, it won't do it in one run. Um, I don't think that's a possibility unless you see massive amounts of investment come in to hold. Do not forget that a market effectively is um, psychology a lot of the time. So these big bag holders are waiting for people to continue to pump this price and they will just absolutely unload the majority of the tokens they are holding to take their profits and exit and then they'll move around. A really good way of sort of seeing this as well is if you go onto Zilliqa's uh, main website, you can see the top addresses. Now there are pages of these addresses where they hold, uh, many wallets are holding several million tokens. Um, be warned if you if you do look at this yourself. Anything with transactions that are in the thousands are most likely a node or some sort of um, facilitating trade. But it's these lower uh, transaction count wallets. These will be the early investors that have got into the project. Probably averaged in over a couple of hundred transactions, and they're sitting on millions of tokens. Now, some of these may be in this for the long term. And this happens with every project, guys. Every project is going to have massive um, account holders, but they seem to be an awful lot of these accounts with millions of tokens that could. Affect effectively shock the price very quickly if they do decide to turn around and offload. So you can see here, Binance Wallet 7, like I said, anything with thousands of transactions is most likely some sort of node or custodian wallet from, from an exchange or, or something along those lines. Um, like I said, it, this sounds like a very interesting project, a very cool layer one project because its primary focus is on the metaverse at the moment. Like, as I mentioned in previous videos, um, and there's some good comments in the description, sorry, in the discussion beneath the video, talking about his comparison to HBAR, I still firmly believe, and, and you know, it can be ratified quantitatively that HBAR is effectively a better, more robust and scalable layer one solution than Zilliqa. However, that being said, Zilliqa is doing something that HBAR is not. It's moving into the metaverse at quite a rate. HBAR is taking the, um, the other avenue, effectively the left-hand lane of the fork in the road, and they're going down the enterprise route. Now, there may be a world in which in the next couple of years, both of these projects will coexist. Yes, I think that's that's certainly a possibility. And I will look for this project to retrace and I may end up picking up some of these tokens if there is a retrace. As of right now, though, I will be steering clear of this. Some other bullish news, though, for Zilliqa, if you guys are invested in the project, is they have just onboarded three new esports partners, um, those being Mad Lions from Spain, Sweden's Ninjas in Pyjamas, and the Indonesian-based team RRQ. Um, all three of those teams are very, very big, and it, it just sort of brings together this sort of metaverse Web 3.0 environment with gaming as well in the metaverse being a focus, clearly because of their partnerships with these three meta uh, three esports teams, which is very bullish for the project in general. Not only that, we can still see as well on Luna Crush that is the number one alt rank coin at the moment. Um, serious amount of noise about this project on all the socials, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, etc. Um, and that is what is continuing to drive the price. I do expect this to flip at some point though, and it will begin to retrace and the retracement will probably be quite large. Um, interestingly enough, as I said, a lot of this is sort of psychology based in these very um, euphoric market moments. And we can see here, you know, if you literally search 
search the hashtag Zill or Dollar Zill over on uh, Twitter, you'll see conflicting posts. So there's one here that I just sort of singled out saying, you know, textbook bull flag um, is going to continue going. Um, and then you flip over and you see another tweet saying it's pumped like crazy, sold most of my Zill when it pumped 80 to 120%, waiting for a big retrace to the 0.125-ish levels and further. If not, if it does, I look for a good buying opportunity or if not, I'll open short. So you can see here that there's this um, sort of opposing view of where the price is going to continue going. In my opinion, I side more with what this tweet says in terms of there will be a retracement. It's just a natural um, effect of a market, especially when there's been a lot of euphoric activity. Some of these big wallet holders will be looking to exit their positions. Now, moving on from Silica and we're looking at Chainlink, I was ironically looking at this because um, I was looking at some wallet activity I'll show you guys in a minute. Chainlink hasn't done very much over the last sort of three month period. It's starting to come out of that wedge as most of the cryptos do, but I think this may be looking for a bit of a, uh, a run up in the next coming days and weeks. Um, ironically, as I was looking at this, Ben Cohen had just released a video um, talking about Chainlink and his idea on whether it is going to have a bit of a pump or not. I urge you guys to check that video out, very interesting. Nevertheless, um, what kind of made me look at this in particular is the, if we go over to whale stats, um, these track some of the largest uh, wallets, particularly in the Ethereum ecosystem, but um, across many different chains. And we can see here, um, one of the top five tokens being purchased at the moment or the fifth token being purchased over the last 24 hours by these huge wallets. And these are huge wallets, millions upon millions upon millions um, of dollars in these wallets. They've been buying up a lot of chain link with the average being 3000 tokens per transaction for these wallets. So really bullish in general um, on that. And that's a new movement we're beginning to see. This can bring the volume in and you may see something similar to what Zillica has done. The volume spikes massively and then you get a massive amount of price appreciation on the back end of that. Now Chainlink is a solid project. I actually prefer Quant as a project anyway, and I'll cover that later on in the channel. However, both of them are very, very good projects. Both of them are blue chip projects and I do hold positions in both of them. Talking about Quant, I um, think something big is coming. Again, looking on whale stats, this was a screenshot from a few hours back. We can see that that was actually the fifth um, or sixth largest um, accumulated token. We can see them buying up a huge amount of quant as well. So it's interesting that these big wallets are buying up Chainlink and quant, both of the interoperability solutions in the ecosystem. Potentially, they're doing a picks and shovels play that if majority of the crypto sphere pumps, these interoperability solutions will pump alongside because they are supporting those other ecosystems and allowing that cross bridge or cross chain uh, bridging of, of uh, information. So top with an increase of 2,400% on one day, um, consolidating under a huge res, big news, and we pop. So really interesting stuff going on here. As we can see the, the price as well over time for Quant, um, it's been coming out of that channel. I was buying around the sort of $100 mark and you know I had an average up here somewhere. I bought the average all the way down and I'm now in the green on Quant as I was averaging into those positions and hopefully it'll be rewarded very nicely as this breaks out. I'm incredibly bullish on Quant in general. Flicking over now and talking back or bringing back to our mainstay on this channel, which is obviously HBAR. Um, really, really interesting screenshot from Dylan Hashgrapher or Dylan Faircloth over on Twitter. In one day, someone did 211 million transactions on the Hedera testnet. Whoever this is, if and when they go live on the mainnet, will definitely disrupt the crypto space. And this just goes to show how scalable Hedera really is. 211 million transactions on the testnet. I think he's got a small video here where he caught some of it, but we can see that was roughly 8,500 transactions per second. Absolutely crazy uh, over on the testnet. And we got Matt Smith, he's there from the Dovu team, saying it's probably the step function troll. So there is clearly a very, very large use case or scalable project that is still testing on the testnet um, to try and see if it's completely viable and clearly it's working. Um, and if we see something like this actually go live to the main net, um, it will be absolutely insanity for HBAR in general. Mega bullish stuff to see. And it's great that we're still seeing projects developing over on the testnet. Talking about the Hedera price in general, 
Um, we've had a few good days. The volume has increased quite nicely over the last week or so, and we're beginning to push back towards that 25, 26 cent range. There's obviously a decent amount of resistance there. I think once we break that 25 to 26 cent range, um, it's off to the races realistically. I've said in a couple of previous videos, and I'll say it again for transparency, I'm just going to continue averaging into my position up until probably the 30 or 40 cent range. And then if we do see a bit of a parabolic run towards that $1 mark, I'll hold on with the rest of you guys and see where we kind of bottom out um, or top out at, I should say, and then take it from there. I'll inform you guys about anything that I intend to do with my tokens anyway, as I think it's interesting to be transparent with you all. Like I've said before, no financial advice. Make sure you're doing your own research. I'm just a guy on the internet. Um, in terms of general crypto news for today, uh, something about Visa was posted. Um, so a comment from Visa saying we want every NFT marketplace to be able to accept Visa cards. That is incredibly bullish in general that Visa wants to move into the space. Um, we may start seeing them have some sort of crypto uh, payment solution in the future. We've got some of the challenger uh, payment systems like Square and PayPal that are already moving in. So it'd be interesting to see if the incumbent incumbent companies like visa and mastercard begin to move in as well fast food is now joining the metaverse as well kfc arby's hooters uh, panera bread panda express uh, baskin robbins dunkin donuts burger king the list is endless really interesting to see a traditional industry being uh, the food and beverage or consumer staple sort of industry moving into the metaverse in such a way like this. It just goes to show how wide reaching um, Web 3.0 will push and that potentially it is the new paradigm shift for business. Um, you know, you'd expect tech companies to move in on the space, but when you start seeing food, fast food chains moving in on the metaverse as well, clearly something's up and, you know, following the money here is probably not a bad idea. Some more bullish news, obviously Ubisoft uh, being a Hedera governing council member as well, but Ubisoft, Polygon and Animoca brands have just invested millions into blockchain gaming developer across the ages. So again, some more really bullish news here. They get a $12 million grant um, from Ubisoft, Polygon and the Animoca brands. So NFT based game that has attracted a large pool of gaming talent, including, including 70 artists from the well-known titles, including Star Wars and Game of Thrones. Now, again, seriously interesting stuff. Um, metaverse and gaming narrative are going to be huge over the next coming years. And being early in these projects is what's gonna make the difference. This is obviously one of the reasons that Zillica is pumping so much. Like I said, I'll round up the video, just looking at Zillica again. Um, in terms of this volume that I was mentioning previously, we're starting to see the volume now begin to drop off again. As we see that volume drop off, potentially there may be a bit of a sell off as we move into the end of the week. Um, I would not be surprised. And I'll say again, my position on this stands firm. I will not be investing anything into this until we do see a retracement. I'll cover it on the channel if there's any more news on the project. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed this video. Please make sure to subscribe for future content. There's a lot of stuff coming as there's rumors around um, Dead Pixels launch being very soon. And also there's some more information on Stada coming out next week. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'll be bringing you guys the content as it gets released. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.